All right, welcome to Prompt Engineering for Beginners. What is Prompt Engineering for ChatGPT? Basically, it means how you format things, what you feed to ChatGPT, and what output you want from ChatGPT. So there's three main, three main elements, what you put into it, how you give it instructions, and what output you expect from it. Now, if you work on all three of those areas, you can get it very specific to give you the exact results that you want so that you have minimal editing on the back end before you can actually use the outputs and the content that it gives you in marketing materials to create blog posts, whatever it is that you are trying to do with it. So I'm going to share my screen and talk you through three specific examples of how this will work. So we're going to go through from least specific to most specific prompt. And I'm going to talk you through, again, those three elements. So the input, what information you're feeding it, the instructions, how you are telling it to give you an output, and then the formatting of the output. So what format do you want the output in? Now, these are all for quizzes because that's my domain of expertise, been doing this for 10 years. And so for me, it makes a lot of sense, but you can really use this for anything because again, it's just input, instruction, output. Very, very simple. So we're going to start with the most basic here, and I'm going to show you how ChatGPT gets better the more you train it. It's a training model. It's That's literally generative pre-trained transformer. So it generates text, which is the worst thing it's at, good at. It's It hallucinates a lot. It makes stuff up. That's the part that like you're hearing people complain about and the ethics and whatever. It's just making up facts. That's because it needs to be trained. It needs something to train on so that it can transform whatever you're training it into something else. You give it something, transforms into something else. There's a Google blog that I'll link below. It has a really great graphic of how that works, where it takes the text, parses it apart, converts it into something else. So the first example that I have here is making a product recommendation quiz using an example of another product recommendation quiz, but I'm giving it no context as to what the content of the quiz I'm trying to make is. So let's look at it because I don't think that makes a ton of sense without actually seeing this. So the first thing I'm doing here is follow a personalized product recommendation engine framework using interspace filtering. So this is part of my instruction. Now, ChatGPT understands things because it's trained on Wikipedia, it's trained on research articles, so when I say product recommendation engine framework, it knows what that means. That is something that was published in research paper, papers as far back as 1999. It also knows what interest-based filtering is. So this is part of the instruction design where you really need to understand what it knows and what it doesn't know. Now, ironically, no one really knows what it knows and doesn't know. So you kind of just have to test this a lot. Like, you might tell it write in this certain style and it doesn't know what that means. You might tell it write in another style and it totally nails it. So you really have to play around with that. Uh, and then I'm asking it to make a what type of coffee beans are right for you quiz. And I'm asking it to follow a quiz format that I am putting below and asking it to write in the same tone as the example. Now, I can't stress enough that ChatGPT is pretty useless without an example to follow. It, all the stuff that you see online of it making up essays and writing things from thin air, it's generic, it's boring, it's trained on just the most basic stuff. Like it's not going to make you anything very good. So that's my two cents. Uh, other people might have different perspectives, but it is a transformer. It needs to be trained. It's not meant to just pull things out of thin air. And that's why there's so much trouble. Okay. That's diatribe. Let's dive into this. So now I'm giving it an example quiz format. So this is the third part of what we're talking about. So again, instructions, input and output. So in this case, the only input I'm giving it is this. 
which is why this is going to be the worst version of what we look at today because it doesn't have a lot of input. It's very lacking on input. And again, all three of those areas you can go so deep on and get really, really good at, and you should. I think you should. Um, okay, so instruction, this is the instruction. Input, this is the input. And then output format is this. So I wrote an entire skin type quiz. I wrote it, it was not written by <laughs> chat GBT or any sort of AI from scratch using my own knowledge. And this is the example that I'm feeding it because if you don't give it an example like this, ooh, it gets bad. Um, it gets really bad. Like it will make stuff up. It will give you crazy long results or crazy short results. It'll give you yes, no answer choices. It's all over the place. It's garbage, like absolute trash. Um, but this is actually pretty good. So it gave me this quiz title, what type of coffee beans are, this is the output in green. I'm not gonna run it in real time, it takes too long. Short description, quiz questions. So it's it's not bad, it's just super generic. Like this is literally like, I could, I mean, this is just really basic. It reads like a Wikipedia article because a lot of chat GPT is trained on Wikipedia articles. So duh. Um, one other important setting here is the temperature. I'm using OpenAI Playground, not chat GPT. Chat GPT is just like, it's tuned in a very specific way that doesn't work for most use cases. Use the Playground if you're serious about learning prompt design because you can play with the temperature, the lengths, and these other settings. So. Do that. Okay, so this is the most basic and gives you the most generic output. Let's move to the second most basic. So everything's staying the same. My instructions are the same. Product recommendation engine, framework, interest-based filtering. You know, the only difference now is I'm feeding it an online store. And Henry's House of Coffee is a great friend of ours, super innovative guys over there. Uh, innovative team overall over there, not just guys. And they have an awesome quiz on their site that was not made by AI, but they've been kind enough to let us test out the AI models on their site. So go check them out. It's henryshouseofcoffee.com. Great coffee. I drink it. I'm not getting paid if you buy it. Um, I just think they're really cool. So what are we doing here? So the only difference that we're doing is we are adding more input. So in this case, we're adding the name of the copy house, the URL and short description, like one sentence description. Now, the other thing that's gonna change here is because I'm giving it input, I'm not giving it an example quiz to follow. Now I'm just giving it the format without any text. So that's important. Once you start giving it bigger inputs, you don't want to give it the example like I did here with this skin type quiz that's transforming into a uh, coffee quiz because you only want one transformation. You don't want it to go website to skin type to quiz to coffee quiz. You just want it to go website to coffee quiz or a skin type quiz, coffee quiz. It's only a single shot. That's not how you say it, right? But it only does one transformation. It's not going to do multi-part transformations. So if you're feeding it a bigger input, do not also feed it a full input example. So anyways, output here is better. It's more personalized. It uses the brand name. This is what I actually recommend that our customers start with because it's the fastest version of getting something good. So you'll start to learn this too in your own work. Like at the end of the day, you have to run through this and humanize and make sure that the voice is accurate to you. Even if you're feeding it a bunch of your own text to start with, you just have to, it's not going to get everything right. And it's just embarrassing to have stuff that's like clearly written by AI. Um, so again, though, my instructions are the same because I already tweaked these instructions like a hundred times. Um, and then I just add this input and then my output format is different in this one. So that's example two. And then example three, and this is where you get the most input and this gives you the best result. 
I have the same instructions, but now my input is this whole list of products, right? So I have all these products and I have descriptions for the products. Now you can go even further and write a full paragraph description for each of these products or copy that from the website. I did that and it worked even better than this. So you can keep going down this path. You can keep going down this path of tweaking the inputs. So here's that same output format, but this quiz output is pretty solid. It's written with some of the same language that Henry uses. Uh, it has like really solid outcomes with specific products already in them. So this, this takes down my time on the back end by a lot. So again, you have your instructions, you have your input and you have your output, your instructions can be tweaked and modified as much as you want, or as little as you want. I have found that with prompt design, prompt engineering, whatever you want to call it, there is kind of a diminishing returns where after a certain point, it gets confused if you give it too many instructions. So you kind of got to walk the line there in terms of what's the right amount of instructions to give the inputs. Honestly, this one, you can go pretty far with giving it a lot of input because the more input you give it, the more it has to train on, the more it has to train on, the better that transformation is going to be. So I would say this is where I would put a lot of my focus is figuring out the right inputs. And then the output format, this, this takes a lot of testing. Like every single one of these elements, like you got to test these and make sure that it understands how to format things. Some of these, I have like very specific instructions. Again, like you kind of just have to test and see what it understands and what it doesn't understand. This is very much a trial and error method. There's not like a set functionality of like, oh, it understands this, but it doesn't understand that, whatever. Like you really have to just be comfortable with testing a lot of things. Once you find something though, keep it, right? Because once you find something, you keep it, it just works over and over again. That's pretty great. So that is my, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, that's my intro to prompt engineering. I think a lot of people out there will try to sell you a bill of goods on, you know, you got to learn this and that and the other thing. Honestly, though, after using this for at least 300 hours now, probably more than that, and training it on a very specific data set with quizzes, what I found is these three things, right? It's the instructions that you give it, and that's a whole category to figure out. The input that you give it, again, full category to figure out, and then how you format the output. And that is how you actually get effective results from using ChatGPT, or I recommend Playground over ChatGPT by a mile. Then you can codify this stuff into the API, build fine-tuning models out of it, but you really have to figure it out with the one shot first, like make it work once before you can do any of that. Because if you don't figure it out really concretely with one example, it's not gonna work with a lot. So hopefully that is helpful. That's what I've learned so far. This really changes uh, you know, the usage of actually getting value out of this and being able to use the model for something really practical instead of just like this stupid junk that people are generating out of thin air.